tell you exactly why they left. You tell me. It's not my version. It is why. Go ahead. Kevin was hired as a booker. Yeah. His wife, Miss Nancy, had been having an affair with Benoit right. the whole time they were on the road together. That's an ultimate sin in the wrestling business. And it's an ultimate sin in life for your wife to date your buddy or somebody you're working with. But it happens all the time. Okay? Mm -hmm. So Benoit took Kevin's condo on Daytona Beach. He took Kevin's wife. He did a lot of stuff. Kevin never, Kevin's a badass. Kevin would have kicked Benoit's ass easily, or he'd have stabbed him in the eye with a fork, or he, he did something. Nancy couldn't let it go. Every day she was telling Chris, he's going to get you. Watch him. He's going to get you. you. So years go by. Like Kevin told me, he said he took my wife, he took my condo in Daytona, you know, when he got the job back booking, he said, I'm not going to do anything to him because I don't want to lose my job. Kevin put the world title on that bitch. Yes. Had him beat, god dang, uh, Sid Vicious. And I begged him. I said, don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. It's foolish. Benoit is not a world champion. Don't do this. He's great on the card. Like I said, in the Ringling Brothers Circus, he's a high wire act. He's, but he's not the lion tamer. He sticks his head in the lion's mouth, it's going to get bit off. And that's what happened. We were in, Kevin got the booking job. We were in, I want to say, Cincinnati or something. Benoit beats Sid Vicious for the world's title. We go to uh, Cleveland or something the next day. J.J. Dillon comes walking in. No, not J.J., but they had given the uh, the accountant. Nice guy. Bob, uh... Bo Bob Duke, not Bob. Duke. Not not Bob Duke. Uh, Bill Bush. Bill Bush. Right. Bill Bush. They get they made Bill Bush the boss. Uh, some TV guys and whatever got this big push to get rid of Eric Bischoff because Eric had been flailing and and whatever. So they fire Eric Bischoff and put Bill Bush in as the boss. So Kevin puts the world championship world title on Benoit. Bill Bush comes in the dressing room with Kevin and I and he said, guys, said I. He said I. I I know what I'm going to do, but I just want to tell you. He said, Benoit, Guerrero, uh, Perry Saturn, the blonde-haired guy that was a skateboard guy for a while that looked kind of good but never drew a dime. I don't know. He Shane, worked. Shane Douglas. Shane Douglas uh, and somebody else said, they're all going to leave if, if I don't fire Kevin and you and J.J. Dillon. I said, what? said, quote unquote, Benoit said he can't trust his career in Kevin's hands. I said, Kevin, against everybody, put the world's title on him last night. And he said, well, I'm, I'm going to let him go, but I just want you to know the ultimatum that they just gave me. I said, really? So I walked out of the dressing room. I found Benoit. I took and sat his ass down in the middle of the arena where nobody was around. I said, let me tell you something, you're worthless. I won't use the language I did. You can say. But I said, Kevin Sullivan is your biggest pusher. I said, I said not to put the world title on you. J.J. Dillon said not to put the world title on you. But Kevin is your biggest pusher. He did that on his own. I said, now here's the difference between Kevin and I. If you had taken my wife, I would kick your ass every time I saw you for the rest of your life. That's what I'd do. But I said, now... Now that you've tried to take my job because I'm Kevin's friend and you want to fire me, I said, I'll cut your fucking head off and put it on a stick in front of your house for all the kids to throw rocks at it. I said, I'm not the guy to mess with. He got up and I said, come on, let's roll. Tough guy. You know, let's go. And I was... 50 at something at the time. I don't know. And he ran off through the building. Oh my God. Oh my God. About an hour later, here comes JJ. He walks in. He said, Mike, what did you do? I said, I didn't do anything. He said, the lady at Human Resources just called me and said that, that Benoit called her and that, that, that Mike Graham in the upper office had threatened his life. And I said, JJ, you've known me a long time. Would I do that? He said, oh yeah. I said, no, 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 wrong answer. I said, let me call the lady. She said, don't. I said, let me call her. So I call her. Hi, how are you? Mike Graham, yes, ma'am. Uh, I just had a, uh, she wouldn't tell, she, like, we don't know. Well, I just had a complaint from a wrestler that said, you threatened his life. I said, here's the way it is. 
this is a very violent sport we live in. We're not, we're not selling candy bars and crap like that out here. You know, I said, I've grown up. I said, all I told Chris was that if he had taken my wife and totally embarrassed me in front of my friends, my comrades, my everything, that I'd whip his ass every time I saw him. Now, can you blame a, a high-strung professional athlete for just making a comment like that to another high-strung? I said, that's the way we don't go dancing. We don't go, we're, we're kind of like dogs that nip at each other. And she said, that's what you said to him? I said, yeah, I told him I'd whip his ass every time I saw him had he done that to me. Where he didn't, Kevin didn't do nothing, you know. And he said, oh, well, yeah, I can understand that. So then when, when he didn't get her to do anything to me and when Bill Bush wasn't going to fire Kevin, then that's when I called him the little band of midgets little band of midgets ran to New York and I said I just saved our company two and a half million dollars a year because they never drew a dime not a dime not a dime I did the TVs I had the TV people give me a minute to minute rating of all of our shows I knew when people stopped watching who they were watching when they were tuning in those guys never drew a dime not one penny people were changing the station watching something else when they came on how they convince him of doing what they did, I don't know. I said, Barry Wyndham, put him on TV. But Barry's Barry, and I love you when you see this, but he's so undependable. Barry does what he wants to do. He, he, he wants to go drinking and chasing some girl. He ain't going to come to work. Maybe a week, two weeks. I mean, you know, he's. But, but when he was on TV, they watched him. When Rick Rude was on TV, they watched him. When Sting was on TV, they watched him. Luger, eh, somewhat, somewhat. Uh, uh, oh, Stevie Booker T. Nobody watched him. Mm. So I mean, I knew. I I I wrote lists of names to put on TV because I knew who the people were watching. Mm. Nobody did that, and it was all right. It was all things we had at our our fingertip. I just call, send me the minute by minute, and I'd go in and show the guys here. Kevin Nash drew. Kevin, Kevin drew money. We need Kevin on TV. We need, you know, this and this and this and this. The other guys are just stillers. Two and a half million dollars left. Give me a half a million for getting rid of them.